Jeannie and Cuckoo. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, you're watching a video that's part of our Adobe Animates beginner series. In this video, we are going to dive into the user interface and show you how to make it work for you. Let's get started. All right, let's jump right in. Adobe Animate comes with its own preset workspaces. But the beauty of it is that you can customize the workspace to fit to your own preference and workflow. Today, we will explore various elements of the user interface and how you can tweak them to your liking. And once you have your desired workspace laid out, we will then save the workspace. First up, we have the document panel. This is where all the magic happens. Your canvas or stage is where you will create and animate your content. You can zoom in and out, resize the stage and change its properties right from here. The document panel has two areas, the stage and the pasteboard. The stage is the working area of your project. Only elements on the stage will be visible to the viewers when you publish the project. The pasteboard is the area surrounding the stage. While the content on the pasteboard is visible to the author, it won't show in the published file. To hide or unhide the content on the pasteboard, use the Clip Content Outside the Stage button here. Use this drop-down menu here to resize the stage area. To zoom in and out, use these keyboard shortcuts. Now here's a handy tip for those using a pen tab. You can use the rotate tool to rotate the stage area, making it much easier to draw and animate in different angles. Simply select this rotate tool or press the keyboard shortcut Shift plus H. Click and drag on the stage to rotate it to your desired angle. This feature is incredibly useful for getting those perfect drawing angles. To exit out of the Rotate tool, click H on your keyboard. Next, we have the Timeline panel. This is your Animation Control Center. Each layer represents a different element on your animation, and the frames show the progress of time. You can add keyframes, adjust the timing, and organize your animation here. Just above the frame count, you see the duration. For example, in this case, the project is set to 30 FPS, which is frames per second. Hence, you will see a 1 second marker about the 30th frame. Finally, we also have tools for frame management, tween creation and playback right here on the timeline pane. You can always customize these tools, but for now, let's stick to the default view. Moving on to the Tools panel, located usually on the left side of the screen. This is where you will find all the tools you need to create and edit your animation, like the Selection tool, Brush tool and Text tool. Some tools are even grouped under a single section. You can even customize which tools are visible to streamline your workflow. We will learn more about these tools while practically working on the animation file. Now let's look at the Properties panel. Under the Properties panel, you will notice four tabs. Tool, Object, Frame and Dock. These tabs become available once the respective element is selected. For example, when you click any tool from the Tools panel, the properties for tools are available. Tools properties include options for the currently selected tool in the Tools panel. Here, you can adjust settings specific to that tool, making your workflow more efficient. Object properties appear once you have selected any object on the stage. This tab lets you modify the selected object's attributes 
like color, size, and position. Frame properties let you adjust both frame and tween specific attributes. This is crucial for fine tuning your animation and ensuring smooth transition between frames. And finally, the document properties involve everything you do with the general document setting. Here, you can change the state size, frame grade and other document wide settings. Last but not least, we have the library and the asset panel. This is where all your important assets like images, audio and symbols are stored. You can drag and drop these assets onto your stage, making it easy to manage your project files. Now that we have covered the basics, let's talk about customizing your workspace. Adobe Animate allows you to rearrange these panels to suit your workflow. Simply click and drag these panels to reposition them. You can also resize them by dragging the edges. Once you have set up the workspace just the way you like it, you can save it for your future use. Then workspace and then new workspace. Give it a name and hit save. Now you can easily switch between different workspaces depending on your project needs. And there you have it, a quick tour to the Adobe Animates user interface and how to customize it. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more such tips and tutorials. Also, let us know in the comments what are the topics you would like us to cover in this series. Until next time, happy animating, see you in the next video.